Hi hamster lovers and welcome to Pancake's channel. Today I'm going to be talking about pretty much everything you need to know before getting a hamster. So if you'd like to improve your pet's care or are thinking of getting a hamster then this video is for you. So to start off with let's talk about the different species of hamster. There are over 20 species of hamster however only 5 are commonly kept as pets. This includes the Syrian, Roborovsky, Chinese, Campbell's Dwarf Hamster and the Winter White Russian Dwarf Hamster. Syrians are the largest species of hamster and are most commonly kept as pets, and Roborovskis are the smallest. All of these species are solitary, which means they cannot live together. They all prefer to live alone as they're territorial. If they are kept together then they will fight. This can sometimes be fatal. Their average lifespan is about 1.5 to 2 years, however some can live longer. Now let's talk about some things to consider before getting one of these pets. They require both financial and time commitment. They aren't throwaway pets and shouldn't be treated like toys or presents. Even though they're small, they are expensive. You can easily spend hundreds of pounds on supplies and vet bills. You need to be willing to make the commitment of looking after them properly for their whole life until they pass. If you find yourself unable to look after your hamster then it may be a good idea to give them to a rescue who can or even a responsible friend. If you plan on getting a hamster for a child then it's still the adult's responsibility to make sure the hamster's properly looked after. They don't make good pets for very young children as they're nocturnal. This means that they sleep in the day or are awake at night. Now let's talk about things that you'll need before you get a hamster. It's important to set up the cage then get the hamster as this minimises stress. The first thing you need is a cage. This needs to be secure and escape proof with lots of ventilation. The bare minimum cage size is 80 by 50 centimetres or 620 square inches. To make sure their cage is large enough you'll need to measure the internal width and length. So in an enclosure like this the extra levels wouldn't count towards floor space. Neither do platforms or cages connected by tubes, unless both cages are very large. It's also important that it's around 50cm tall to allow for enough space for a large enough wheel and a deep layer of bedding. If you plan on getting a wooden enclosure like the poor hut, then it's a good idea to waterproof the wood. Using plaster coat, clear project enamel is a good way of protecting the wood. If you would like to paint and protect the wood, then using cuprinol garden paint is a good idea. A more affordable enclosure option would be to make a bin cage. Not all countries have plastic bins that are large enough though. You could also try looking online for second hand enclosures that are large enough. eBay, Gumtree and Facebook Marketplace are some good places to check. My favourite type of enclosure is a tank with a mesh lid. This is because it's easy to clean and escape proof. Please don't get a cage from a pet store. This is because they're too small and inadequate for providing a hamster with everything that they need to thrive. The base of the cage is too small to allow for enough bedding and the wheels are also too small. The only potential suitable enclosure would be the Savic Hamster Heaven. Next you'll need bedding. It's very important that the bedding's dust free and unscented. Paper based aspen and hemp beddings are the safest types. Katie Clean and Cozy and Carefresh beddings are some popular types. Aspen and hemp beddings are common in the reptile section of the pet store. Unlabeled shavings like this are not safe. Pine and cedar shavings are also not safe. This is because pine and cedar contain naturally produced chemicals that are harmful for small animals. These chemicals as well as dust can affect their delicate respiratory systems. Scented shavings are not safe as they can irritate the hamster's respiratory system as well. It can also irritate their skin. You will need to provide a minimum of 8 inches of bedding to allow them to burrow. However, some hamsters don't start burrowing until they have at least 10 inches of bedding. It's important that it can hold burrows though. To help it hold burrows you can mix in some soft, dust-free, orchard grass, meadow or timothy hay. Mixing together paper-based and safe wood shavings can also help with this. I'd also strongly recommend adding a layer of hay over the top of the bedding. This is great as it enriches the hamster's natural foraging behaviours. 
Plus it looks very natural and they can use it in their nests. Next you'll need material for your hamster to make nests out of. For this, torn up paper or toilet paper works well. You'll need to make sure the paper doesn't have any ink on it though. It's important to not use any fluffy bedding like this. This is because it can wrap around limbs, cutting off circulation to them. This can lead to them losing their limbs. It can also wrap around teeth. Next, you'll need a hideout. It's good to have multiple hideouts so your hamster can choose to sleep in multiple different places. Multi-chamber hideouts are great as they replicate how a hamster would burrow in the wild. This is what hamster burrows kind of look like in the wild. As you can see, they have entrances and multiple different chambers. One would be used to store food, one would be used as a toilet, and another would be used for baby hamsters. Plastic hideouts are not great as they don't have enough ventilation. They also can be chewed. Next thing you'll need is a wheel. Hamsters run up to 9 kilometers per night in the wild. This means that they need something to exercise on. Dwarf hamsters need a wheel that's at least 8 inches and Syrians need a wheel that's at least 11 inches in diameter. It's important that the wheel is made of a solid material such as cork or plastic. Wire and mesh wheels are absolutely not safe. This is because walking on wire or mesh for a long period of time can lead to a condition called bumblefoot. This is where the bottom of a hamster's feet swell up and it's very painful. This is a healthy hamster foot and this is the foot of a hamster that has bumblefoot. It's important that the hamster's back isn't bent while they're running on their wheel otherwise this could cause back problems. This rat wheel in the pet shop is suitable. Flying saucer wheels are not safe as they're quite small. Dwarf hamsters can also run so fast on them that they fly off and get hurt. Even if they don't fly off, flying saucers still take up so much space in the cage that could be used for enrichment. Next, you'll need a sand bath. It's incredibly important to never bathe your hamster in water as this removes the natural oils from their coat. These oils help keep their coat healthy. Calcium and colour-free reptile sand is the best type of bathing sand for hamsters. A cheaper alternative to this would be children's play sand. It's important to disinfect this by baking it. Baking it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes will disinfect it. You'll then need to let it cool. Next, you'll need a large container to put the sand in. Any sort of large lasagna or baking dish will work well for this. It's a good idea to add a hideout into the sand bath as this offers your hamster privacy while they're bathing. Please don't use this type of sand or chinchilla sand as it is too dusty and can give your hamster a respiratory infection. It's a good idea to put the sand bath and any other heavy objects on platforms. This is because if the hamster decides to burrow underneath it they could get squashed and hurt. Next you'll need a water bottle and or a water bowl. Tea light holders make excellent hamster water dishes. To attach a water bottle onto the side of a tank, it's a great idea to use Velcro. That way you can remove it if needed. The next thing you'll need is different substrates. These are important as they enrich your hamster's sense of touch. Good substrates include coconut soil, coconut husk, cork granules, beech chips, and corncob bedding. You could put these substrates in terracotta pots or even just scatter them over the bedding. You could also put them in dishes like these. After that, you'll need a small food dish. These are great for putting salads on. It's a great idea to put the food on a rough surface that the hamster will walk on, such as a slate tile or terracotta dish. This is because it will help wear the hamster's nails down. I like using these slate coasters. These shallow reptile water dishes also make great water dishes. They can also be used to serve vegetables and fruits on. You can also get these metal hanging food skewers. These are great as they occupy your hamster with getting their own food. Some things that are great to add to your hamster enclosure are branches and logs. You'll be able to find lots of cool branches in the reptile section of the pet store. Some good bits of wood to look out for are grapevine branches, java wood, bamboo roots, cork logs and fruit tree wood such as apple, pear or cherry. 
Having a coconut shell in the enclosure is also good. This is because you can fill it with hay and food to make a foraging toy, or just different substrates. Next you'll need chew toys for them. This is because hamsters have 16 teeth that grow continuously throughout their life. You could just use natural wood chews from the pet store or whimsy dog chews. It's important to only give whimsy dog chews about once a month as some hamsters go a bit ham on them and eat too much. Other good ways to wear down your hamster's teeth would be to provide them with walnuts and shells as well as dandelion roots. Now for one of the most important forms of enrichment. This is dried herbs and flowers or forage. This is because it enriches the hamster's natural foraging behaviours. There are lots of different types of forage mixes at your local pet store, hopefully. These will enrich your hamster's sense of smell. Next up is my favourite form of enrichment, which is sprays. You may be able to find these in the bird section of the pet store or online on Amazon or Etsy. Some good types of sprays include oat, flax, millet and wheat sprays. Some other items that are safe that you can add into your enclosure are bendable bridges. These can potentially be dangerous though as hamsters can get their toes stuck in between the gaps of the bendable bridge. To prevent this you could stuff the gaps with moss or toilet paper. This leads on to another thing that's good to add to the cage. This is sphagnum or pillow moss as it looks very natural and prevents boredom. These wood rolls are good. You can also make your own hamster toys out of cardboard. There are plenty of tutorials on YouTube if you'd like to check them out. Here I'm making a snuffle mat by poking holes in a piece of cardboard then stuffing toilet paper through those holes. This enriches the hamster's natural foraging behaviours, plus they can use the toilet paper as nesting. If you live in a warm climate then it's a good idea to have ceramic hideouts for your hamster to go in and cool down. Terracotta pots also work well for this and they add a different texture to the enclosure. Willow balls like this make excellent foraging toys if you stuff them with food. Now let's talk about dangerous hamster products. Any products that look like this aren't safe as they're made out of sawdust and honey. The honey entices the hamster to eat it, however the sawdust can cause intestinal blockages. These can be fatal. Fabric hideouts are okay for supervised play, however they shouldn't be left in the enclosure. The next thing is hamster vitamin solution. This is unnecessary as hamsters should be getting all of the nutrients they need from their diet. The next unsafe thing is hamster leashes. These are unsafe as hamsters are very delicate creatures and shouldn't be walked on a lead like a dog. The leash would have to be on so tightly it would be uncomfortable for the hamster. If it's not on tight enough then the hamster will be able to escape. This isn't good as you'll end up with a lost hamster. The next thing is any sort of anti-parasite medication from the pet store. If you suspect your hamster has parasites or any other illness then please take them to the vet. Another unsafe product is any sort of hamster shampoo. Hamsters shouldn't even be getting wet, so shampoo is unnecessary. Also don't spray anything on your hamster that says it will deodorise them. A huge misconception is that hamster balls are safe. They're actually very unsafe for these reasons. Their toes can get stuck in the ventilation slits, breaking them. They don't have enough ventilation. They can't stop the ball and it can crash into walls, hurting them. They cause disorientation and stress. They're often too small. They can cause infections from urine and feces buildup. They trap heat. And the lids can fall off easily, making it easier for them to escape and get lost. The next thing is yogurt drops. These aren't necessarily unsafe, they're just very sugary. So if you are going to give them, it's good to give them about once a week. Salt licks are also not safe as they contain too much salt. Now let's talk about some other useful products that I recommend getting. The first thing I'd recommend are mason jars for holding food and treats. Measuring spoons are good for measuring out how much food to give your hamster. Large storage boxes are good for storing supplies. Next thing you'll need is a travel carrier for taking your hamster home. They'll also be needed if you need to travel with your hamster or if you need to take them to the vet. The size of the carrier will depend on how big your hamster is and the length of the journey you're going to be going on. This is how you'd set up a travel cage. So you'd add bedding from the cage, you'd compress it, add forage and a hideout and food and then it's done. 
it's a good idea to put a little bit of cucumber in their travel enclosure. This will keep them hydrated on the journey and won't spill like a water bottle or bowl would. Now let's talk about your hamster's diet. Hamsters are omnivores. Here are some food mix percentages that your hamster will need. You can compare these percentages to your hamster's food mix to make sure they've got the right balance of macronutrients. It will usually have this listed on the back of the package. It's very important that they have a varied diet. This is an example of a low quality mix and a high quality mix. As you can see, this is only made up of a few ingredients. It also contains a lot of fillers, such as dehydrated corn and sunflower seeds. It lacks in variety and there's quite a few pellets. This is a Chubby Cheeks hamster food and it's got a lot of variety. I've made a list of some of the best hamster foods. All of them are available on Etsy. So first we've got Getsu, Chubby Hamster Cheeks, Robin's Gourmet Syrian, and Hamster Bacon. It's best to avoid food mixes that are made out of only pellets. This is because it lacks in variety and gets very boring for the hamster. There are also a variety of fruits and vegetables that hamsters can eat. Some vegetables include carrots, broccoli, cauliflower, cucumber, celery, spinach, peas, kale, sweet potato, lettuce, green beans, eggplant, cantaloupe, turnip, Brussels sprouts, courgette, cabbage, tomato, watercress, rhubarb, spinach, romaine, lettuce, asparagus and bell pepper. Some more safe fruits include apple, banana, blackberries, blueberries, cantaloupe, cherries, cranberries, grapes that are seedless, lychee, mango, melon, peaches, plums, raspberries, raspberry leaves and strawberries. Make sure to properly wash fruit and vegetables before giving it to your hamster. You will also need to cut it up into small, manageable pieces. Unsafe sorts of fruits and vegetables include any sort of citrus fruits. This means oranges, tangerines and lemons. They also can't have apple seeds, apricot stones, cherry stones, unwashed vegetables, onions, garlic, lettuce and avocado. Now let's talk about hamster health checks. To do a health check you'll need to blow on their fur and the skin should be healthy not red, dry, flaky and it should be clean with no parasites or bald patches. Their eyes also need to be bright, clean and clear. You'll need to make sure the ears are smooth and clean. They should have all their toes and nails and they need to be clean and not overgrown. Their body shouldn't feel bloated or bony. And their legs should move freely with no staggering or stiffness. It's a good idea to wear your hamster weekly using a digital scale. This will let you make sure that they're not suddenly losing or gaining a lot of weight. Losing or gaining a lot of weight in a short period of time could indicate a health problem. So if this happens, you'll need to take them to the vet. Their breathing also needs to be silent with no wheezing. This is what a respiratory infection can sound like. So if you notice any signs of illness in your hamster or any changes in behaviour, please take them to the vet as soon as possible. Something I forgot to mention in the section about hamster cages was stress behaviours. Stress behaviours are shown when the hamster's cage is too small or doesn't have enough enrichment. These include bar biting, bar climbing and cage pacing. Other stress behaviours include cage aggression and constantly digging at the enclosure. Now let's talk about what temperature to keep your hamster at. The temperature in the room shouldn't drop below 5 degrees or go more than 32 degrees. If the temperature in the room drops below 5 degrees Celsius, then the hamster can go into a form of hibernation called torpor. In torpor, they may appear to be asleep or even dead. Their temperature must be raised gradually by placing the hamster on a covered heat pad or hot water bottle. This should be no more than 32 degrees Celsius. You could also warm them up by placing them on your stomach. Here's a very helpful TikTok on how to keep your hamsters cool during the summer. So you can make them a salad to hydrate them, have the windows open and blinds down. Change their water often but don't put ice cubes in it. Free ceramic hides. And also have a fan in the room. Here's another helpful TikTok on how to keep your hamster warm during the cold. So you can place blankets on their cage to insulate it. Make sure there's still enough ventilation though. Having heater in the room is also very useful. Don't have it on for too long though as they can get too hot. 
Now let's talk about where the best place to get your hamster is. That would be either a rescue or an ethical breeder. I'll link another video in the description of where they talk about where the best place to get a hamster is, because I think they did a really good job of explaining it in a lot of detail. Once you bring your hamster home, you'll need to know how to tame them. So when you first bring your hamster home, they need to be allowed to settle in for around two to three days. From the time you get them to the end of the two or three days, try not to handle them to avoid stressing them out, as they're in a new place with new smells. During this period, talking to them softly will be beneficial to get them used to your voice. After this, you can let your hamster get used to your hands being in their cage by refilling their food and water and ruffling their bedding around. Also, put your hands flat in the cage with some of their food on it to encourage them to step onto it. If they come to investigate, don't move suddenly as this will spook them. Passing them treats is also a good bonding strategy. To get them used to your scent, rub some of their bedding or toilet paper onto your hands or wrists. Once they're used to all of this, you can try stroking them in the cage with one finger after washing your hands, maybe while they're eating. This was the first time I ever pet Pancake and he was so tiny. A few days later, use something like a large cup or a travel cage with a treat in it to transfer them to an empty and dry bathtub, or a playpen lined with an old pillow and blanket to practice picking them up. My favourite way to pick hamsters up is by cupping them in my hands and scooping them up like this. So I put my hands either side of their body, then scoop supporting their chest and back legs. Putting one hand in front of the other like this is a great way to make your hamster feel comfortable with you handling them, as when you first start handling them, they may try and jump. If you're worried about them biting, wearing gloves may help, however don't be scared while picking them up, as the hamster will pick up on this and not trust you as much. Keep in mind to be patient and gentle and don't punish your hamster if they bite you. They usually only bite if they feel scared or threatened. They could be very jumpy if they haven't been tamed at all, so be patient and don't make sudden movements. Some hamsters don't enjoy or benefit from human interaction as it stresses them out. These are called ghost hamsters. In this case, it's best not to handle them as handling will cause stress which will lead to a variety of health problems. It may take your hamster weeks, months or even years for them to become fully tame, and some never become fully tame. Now I'm going to be talking about where to keep your hamster cage. It's important not to keep it next to a window in direct sunlight. This can overheat the cage. They must be kept indoors, in a room with no draughts. Keeping them in a bedroom or lounge is ideal. If you're going to keep them in a bedroom, I'd recommend getting a silent wheel. Cork wheels and night angel wheels are very quiet. Plus, hamsters don't really smell if you keep on top of their cage cleaning. I've never had an issue with Pancake being too noisy or smelly in my bedroom. This leads on to the next topic of how to clean your hamster enclosure. This is one of my older enclosures, but I think it's still useful to demonstrate how to clean an enclosure. So cages above 450 square inches only really need to be cleaned about once a month. In this sort of clean, you'd remove all of the soiled bedding. At most, you'd remove a third. You'd then replace the bedding that you took away with new bedding. You should never remove all of the bedding in a hamster's enclosure as it contains familiar scent. Taking away this scent for hamsters is very stressful. If you decide to put a layer of hay over the bedding, then it would be a good idea to remove it as it collects dust. A lot of hamsters go to the toilet in their sand bath. This is completely normal and it makes spot cleaning easier. But to get rid of it, you'd sift through the sand using a sieve. I should have mentioned this in the health section, but the reason why stress is so bad for hamsters is because it can lead to a disease called wet tail. But in most cases it is fatal. Signs of wet tail include loss of appetite or lethargy, which is tiredness, dehydration, dull eyes, and hunched posture. If you notice this, please take them to the vet as soon as possible. Now let's talk about letting your hamster exercise outside of their enclosure. They need to be let out of their enclosure for at least 15 to 30 minutes daily. You could let them free roam in a hamster-proof room or a playpen. Please don't use a hamster ball though. Going back to diet for a second, you may be wondering how often you need to feed your hamster. It's recommended to scatter feed one to two tablespoons. Then wait till they've collected and eaten all of the food. Then give them some more. 
The final thing I'm going to be talking about is whether it would be better to get a male or female hamster. And honestly, there's very little difference between males and females. Every hamster has their own unique personality, just like humans. That's the end of this week's video, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you watch right to the end of the video, then thank you so much. If you're still watching, then please comment below the chicken emoji for no reason at all. Good luck with your hamster. Bye!